Greetings, dear friends. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. We continue our work following the rhythm and cycle of the moon. Come together to work in our group, focusing on the common good. In the current cycle of Taurus, we focus on the theme of universal sharing that we follow through the signs of the fixed cross. And the topic of our meditation throughout this cycle, starting from the full moon, being I am because we are sharing our radiance. Today, we will bring the seeds of our meditation that we've been holding since the full moon, offering them into the group chalice to magnetize that those could become thought forms, magnetic and radiant within the mental field of humanity. So let us begin. And we start with the sounding the statement of purpose. Hello, friends. Our purpose in this project is to support the manifestation of the spiritual plan for our planet. Through our group conversation and meditation, which focusing our joint intention for the common well-being of humanity and Earth overall planetary life. Group work that enable the recognition and manifestation of spiritual principles in all fields of human life and activities, and which intend to magnetize thought forms of true solution, supporting practical acting, which leads to the true advancement of humanity. Let us begin our group alignment through the naming circle. Over to you, Tracy. Thank you, Birgit. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. As we begin our focus today in this new moon meditation, the naming circle unites our hearts across distance as we begin our alignment and bring ourselves fully into our group work. By uniting our hearts in this way, we begin naturally to work telepathically through our group mind. The key to this telepathic work is in the etheric alignment, which creates the group field and allows it to become both a receiving and transmitting agent for higher ideas and energies. We will begin by calling our names into the circle, starting with our organizers. 
and as your name is called, please unmute yourself, say your name, and where you are calling in from. For example, Tracy Arbor calling in from Novi, Michigan, USA. And as we go through this, let us turn our attention to our hearts and the heart center of the group gathered today as each one of us calls ourself into this circle. Alexander. This is Alexander Ilchuk and calling in from Brooklyn, New York in the United States. Welcome. Birgit. Hello, Birgit Rasmussen calling in from Slaelse in Denmark. Welcome. Helen. Hello. This is Helen Franklin. I'm calling in from the UK, uh, quite near London. Welcome. Anne. This is Anne Harley. I'm calling in from Riddick, Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. Welcome. Aneta. This is Annette Löffler calling in from Sorø in Denmark. Welcome. Darcy. Greetings, everyone. This is Darcy calling in from Washington, D.C. area, USA. Welcome. Jillian. Hello everyone, this is Jill from Norfolk, UK. Welcome. Lynn. Hello, um, this is Lynn. I'm calling from Worthington, Ohio, USA. Welcome. Maureen. Maureen, please unmute. Uh, this is Maureen Powers from Homer, Alaska, USA. Welcome. Ruth. Hello, everyone. This is Ruth Dittmar. I'm calling in from Corvallis, Oregon, USA. Welcome. Thank you, everyone. Now that we are linked together as a group, let us share a few moments in silence to align, forming a triangle between Shambhala, the hierarchy, and humanity. May our efforts be of the highest vibration in selfless service for our purpose.
Thank you, friends. So we open now our circle for sharing, bringing forward the most resonant impressions that came to us through the meditation we've been holding since the full moon. Helen uh, led us in the meditation of the full moon, offering us to reflect on the questions you can see on the screen. Those questions are uh, as a gentle guidance in our process of reflection. And of course, the topic is much broader. So we invite us now to share. So please raise your hand if you would like to uh, share. And if you're muted, we will unmute you. And if you're self-muted, please unmute yourself. And um, I'm grateful to those of you who shared uh, your impressions and quotes that resonated for you throughout these two weeks since the full moon and that you shared at the Community Impressions Board. The link to the Impressions Board in the chat of the control panel so you can uh, open it and see what's been shared already through this silence of the community board. So the floor is open. Let us start our sharing in preparation for the meditation that will follow. This is Anita. I have been thinking about um, I am because we are. Um, we are coming from um, a state of consciousness where we had a, a very diffuse um, consciousness in the primitive uh, uh, development um where we were um conscious of the group um in a in a in a uh, diffuse way and now on a, a higher um round of of the spiral uh, of this uh, evolution of consciousness we are turning back to this a uh, sort of um, group consciousness, uh, but now from uh, uh, the the uh, role of our personal uh, consciousness. Uh, so therefore, it is on a higher spiral of the same um, um, evolution of consciousness. Um, so it is not the same, and yet it is more than the group, uh, each, each of, of our consciousness, um, uh, put uh, to, together, uh, it is adding something more in the group consciousness and uh, on a higher spiral than before. It, it is very interesting, I think. Um, yeah, uh, I think I'll stop here. Thank you. Hello. Um... 
Hello, Jill here. Um, I too have been thinking about um, how we've come along from one way to another with Aquarius now being the we rather than the I. Um, and Aquarius guiding us towards uh, group life. In Back in the 60s when Aquarius was uh, just beginning, um, there was that spurt towards groups being formed the hippie groups and they formed communes and they all worked together and cooperated in their lifestyle and they looked after their planet and although it was a emotional more emotional love they spread love and peace and so now we're getting that urge to gain to be in groups at the mental level and above and uh, we have to really try to think back and reconnect with that goodwill that seemed to be around then because in the meantime that's been uh, largely lost we've gone towards greed and selfishness so i think we must uh, make our groups useful and also try to bring back that cooperation that was available then. Thank you. This is Annette again. Um, I'm thinking that uh, in Denmark we have a seventh ray uh, on um, in our uh, country's ray makeup, and we have an old tradition about antiques for evening. It's it 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 means that we uh, um, private persons own a company together uh, for instance for convenience stores or to um, farm materials or farm uh, animals and um, uh, work this uh, has, has this um, uh, store together and share the uh, benefit of it uh, and I think it has to do with our seventh ray and is perhaps what we are going to um, to uh, strive uh, uh, 
uh, against in 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 the uh, 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 in a more um, worldwide uh, perspective. Thank you. I would like to say something about how the work we are doing together is beginning to make a real impression upon me. Um, I often think about the, the phrase in our work about bringing about practical solutions. And I think about this a great deal and wonder what, what I, I can do, what, what fields can one work in to bring about truly practical solutions. I, I, I seem to find that a bit difficult, uh, but I, I am beginning to sense that I am actually changing, that my, my life is changing and maybe radiating these ideas a little, a little more in a more practical way. And I'm also, every day, I am more and more impressed how the different groups I, I belong to, uh, or maybe they're all the same group, who knows, but the, the, the way that these ideas keep coming, coming through with the same word, you know, this word radiance. Uh, I, I found it being the, the focal point in, in several meetings that I've been, and there's a, there's a lot of meetings around the new moon, it's always rather a busy time, and I've, I've just fascinated how, how this word radiance came up in all different conversations, and about the reappearance of the the Christ. Um, I think it was Darcy put on the uh, on, on the board about how he will appear, or I I don't even know whether it is a, a he or whether they they will uh, appear to a certain number of people, and this idea also seems to be in about this, the the reality of radiance and the reality of the reappearance of the Christ seem to be coming much more real and tangible and shared in the wider community. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
I believe we're, this is Lynn. Um, I believe uh, we're told by DK that um, one of the main jobs of this, or the main nature of the seventh ray is to uh, bring the will into manifestation. And um, so I think, Helen, what you're talking about, that's what you're talking about. And, and um, it's certainly beautiful to see um, around us growing. And um, I saw something just briefly, so I, I can't give you the specifics right now, but I'll put it in the chat board. I think I wrote it down somewhere. But uh, yesterday, um, as I was in the middle of doing a lot of family things, trying to get some work done for people in my family, um, I took a minute to sit down. Well, it was actually 20 minutes. And on YouTube, there was an interview it astounded me, um, and I can't give you the people's names, but they were, uh, the, the man being interviewed was a scientist working for one of the universities in California, and um, I believe psychological research, but um, he was synthesizing various lines of uh, various subjects like um, computers, and um, physics, and there was, uh, and in his work, um, and he was talking about quantum physics and how all of these lines are meeting. And um, he talked about how, uh, let me see if I can find something here about it. Um, um, well, he was saying how. Um, reality as we've been formulating it, it's just doesn't exist as we formulated it in the past. Um, even Einstein, Einsteinian physics, it's just, it doesn't exist. And um, I know he was talking about how, um, uh, oh shoot, <laughs> I'm losing my words. Um, time, space, doesn't actually exist if we, as we formulated it, and how if we're going to look for reality, we have to get into the quantum world. And the only people he said that have, or the only groups that have ever addressed that in human history, are the spiritual groups, the religions. And I thought, wow, one end coming back to meet the other is pretty amazing. Um, I'll, I'll try to get the specifics for that interview and put it in the chat box in case you're interested. Uh, let me see. Also, in Cosmic Fire, I read recently, the foundation of groups and aggregations of groups whose sole purpose will be to synthesize all lines of human endeavor and thus bring about unification of effort in economy of force in the scientific, business, philosophic, education, educational, and religious worlds. I read that, and then I saw this thing on YouTube briefly. And I'm going to go back and watch the whole thing. It was pretty long, but I just saw, as I say, I saw 20 minutes of it. Um, that's all for now. This is the native. Uh, I I'm reading a book about Eben uh, from from Eben Alexander. I don't know if you know him. He's an, a neurosurgeon who had a near death uh, experience during coma in uh, 2008, and he has written a very interesting book about um, uh, to heavens and back or something like that. Um, he was on the a bestseller list in New York for several months, uh, it says, and I'm reading his third book, and his um, questioning uh, um, what is uh, consciousness, and he's also talking about uh, that we need a, a mix of um, religions and uh, science. Uh, because um, we know a lot about brains and how they work, but we don't know 
how consciousness um, uh, and where it comes from. We can say something about that uh, from a philosophical uh, view, but um, from uh, science, uh, it is a, a question mark, and um, it is very exciting to see all the science uh, um, uh, who is uh, researching the paranormal um, um, the things about um, um, what is uh, going on in in the consciousness and uh, uh, that it can exist uh, without the brain and such um, and it is it is not a new uh, science but it is interesting to see how it pops up uh, uh, all over the world i think and this is a hardcore um, scientist uh, who was before uh, this near-death experience very um, convinced that what he learned that the brain was the cause of consciousness uh, was right but after uh, the near-death experience he had to question uh, that theory, and um, and his now um, uh, experience uh, 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 is now um, searching and um, uh, making experiments uh, about it. And I, I think it's a very interesting field of uh, science. Um, thank you. Yeah, I can't, I can't help but think how perfect um, and in order everything truly is because we started out with, um, you know, the, the different key are uh, the different keys in each um, century and, you know, it first started out with the magic and the seances and that during uh, Blavatsky's time and then it went into uh, Bailey's time, which was more the psychology. So um, humanity was becoming aware first that there were things that weren't in our physical world. Then they were becoming aware of consciousness and which goes beyond the brain. And now, um, you know, the key they're bringing in now are the quantum physicists, which are bringing in the subtle worlds and what is more real than this physical plane that we're on and i i found this this conversation has been really good today um i appreciate the the 60s groups when when it was being talked about and you know the 60s groups even though they were starting group things um they were still very sixth rayish and i it made me think of of devotion and that type, you know people were devoted to their gurus they were starting to devote themselves to to certain projects and 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 definition of of devotion is earnest attachment to something and here we're now being told we need to detach right to move forward so um you know now that we're getting into seventh ray energy um immediately what came to mind I saw in my mind's eye was the tarot card of the magician which is uh mercury and uh seventh ray and and very um the magic action and uh, exhibition of will and what is bringing unity between uh the divine and intellectual and the physical world so the linking we are becoming the magicians because we know there's magic or there's something out there we're aware of our consciousness and our mentality so we're coming into that mind and um and we're doing this on a higher level than in the 60s which was brought up earlier through a wisdom a deeper wisdom so 
I just, this has been a really, really good conversation. So thank you. This is Annette. Uh, I just read in Theta Crans uh, something about the seventh ray that I didn't know. Um, <laughs> there are much I don't know, but um, uh, uh, she, uh, there, uh, said, it said something about that the seventh ray is uh, magical in the way that some of the uh, steps in a in a, a process is not in the outer form and therefore they suddenly turn up uh, in a magical way that um, we could we can't explain in a sixth ray uh, matter because there everything had a cause and, a, and, a, a, and an effect we could see but in the seventh ray we have this magical point that some of the steps we can't see we don't see uh where they came from and um it makes it um very interesting i think and perhaps when we get a more um understanding about the etheric planes um we are we are going to um because it is the plane of electric and um all the um, um, all the this physic quantum uh, physic uh, particles is uh, in the etheric planes. Um, so we are going to to understand some of it yet, but but there are still many things that are not visible for us yet. So it is a magical time we are nearing, and and uh, we are in uh, already. Very interesting. Thank you. Indeed. Uh... I also was thinking along the same lines of cycles and how the as the time passes by is these certain ideas get further and further in uh, realization for humanity with every cycle appearing in new uh in a more tangible way and uh, yes definitely uh what we can recognize uh on the in the recent history this the energies uh, that were so brightly available in the revolutionary change in, in the 60s came back at this time and uh, we can recognize that and uh, the same is happening on the uh, larger cycles as well I, I believe and I just been reading today uh, book by Blavatsky, The Land of Gods. And uh, it's interesting to, and it's written in the uh, format of a novel. And so it's interesting to penetrate into the vibration that uh, were um, coming in the late 1800s. And recognize that those are the same uh, notes, the same uh, vibrations. And uh, now we, 150 years later, we are in much more reson resonance with those vibrations. And so it uh, gives that sense of penetrating light and that we 
collectively become more and more sensitive to recognize that uh, vibration. For me, this topic, uh, I am because we are sharing our radiance, brings the note of um, this practical uh, magic that also was mentioned, but on the level of our own lives. Uh, we know that the magic is just a certain level of knowledge. And uh, when I uh, say knowledge, I would, uh, I, I mean, uh, and I probably should replace this with the word experience. And, and because knowledge, the true knowledge, again, it comes from this, what I just read today from Blavatsky, that the true knowledge is only the ones that uh, can be recognized deeply. It's not something we get from the books, but something that comes through the resonance within. So, become radiant as we are individually, each in our own uh body in our own environment becoming that center of radiance that would become noticed for others around of us around us uh is probably the most practical and the most magical thing that can happen and that's something that people around us can recognize and can experience and it's something that can inspire others and so sharing our radiance for me sounds very um, practical and of course it's not that not that easy achievable uh, often but that's about that our individual responsibility. It's about our individual work, about uh, our own routines that we practice in our own life. Our own practices of meditation, our own practices of training our mind. And so that is for me um, is the um, main seat uh, for, for that I get from this meditation, becoming radiant to share this radiance with others. For me in the 60s, um, I, I, and I've never seen anything mentioned about this um, coming uh, as a prediction in the books, the blue books, but um, for me, the, the, there was an inspiration, uh, a downflow of energy that was amazing that, that, uh, that people could, could sense and um, I think it it made people, it, it allowed people, I should say, if they were attuned with it, to become radiant. But uh, the challenge was um, to maintain that, to learn, as you were saying, um, Alexander, to, to actually be able to um, have some control of that um, and to keep it, keep it around. Um, over time, that that was a big challenge, and and also, uh, I think looking back at that, as you were talking about Tracy, um, we we have uh, learned to be uh, more mentally polarized, which has been really important. People have had to work on that. Um, I think though, uh, DK says at one point that the real challenge is to um, um, 
be both scientific and devotee. Um, in fact, he says in Cosmic Fire, the true occultist is a scientist and a devotee that um, that that can't be lost. And I th and I think that's that's part of the radiance too, is is having that commitment, that devotion, that um, that um, is, I guess, uh, more uh, governed by the intellect. It just needs to be governed by the intellect. And I think that's again that's part of the the radiance um, that we're talking about. Hello, everyone. This is Ruth, and I am so experiencing the I am because we are. I thank everybody for being on this call and for letting me be on this call. And when I think about what it is that hinders that radiation, that radiance, that love, from my soul, I think about the confusion of my arrogance and humility as an individual and as a group to think that I could do it alone, which I can't. So I just being in a group and receiving this is what I'm feeling here now. And it is my responsibility to just practice being present and being willing to be present with this all. I went on a walk and I, I played, there was this little boy and I played with him and his mother. And then they went somewhere else and I caught up with later. And this wasn't just a little boy, this was the Buddha and the Christ together. And he asked me if he could hold my hand and walk with him. And I'm experiencing that kind of radiance in many experiences I'm having these days. And this is one of them. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing that, Ruth. I immediately got the picture of the moths going to the light um, when you said the little boy came to you. And um, it's so true as far as like, if individually we lift our vibration and, you know, even if somebody isn't um, a devotee or whatever, just but does good and, and cleanses their thoughts and watches them and that that increases the light and more and more of the people humanity are will be drawn to the light kind of like what you just said and uh and it becomes catchy right so it's kind of uh that was really nice thank you Uh, I, uh, through dog walking, have found one of the secrets of becoming more radiant because really I wasn't a radiant person. I'm a, I can come over as being rather aloof, but uh, it's not intentional, it's just the way I am. But now I've found when I'm dog walking, if I can just make myself smile as I'm going around, everybody smiles back and talks and interacts. So that was one secret I've learned about radiance. This is Annette. I have the same experience. 
um, I try to to walk around the a lake uh, nearby uh, as often as, as I can. And there are also many uh, people um, with dogs, <laughs> and also without. And uh, we usually say hi to each other, uh, though I don't know them. But it is very nice uh, to be open in this way. And I think that is um, um, what can um, um, enhance our our radiance that uh, to have a, a, an open mind they also in in as as a scientist or as a religious person uh, we have to to find a way to to connect in in the middle and to have an open mind and um that can uh, enhance the radiance uh, enormously i think a smile and a hi it is an opener <laughs> you you can uh, uh, get a, a a nice feeling of of that and and uh, share your radiance and also when when i walk i try to to uh, think of my uh, heart center and that i sort of make a uh, an eight uh, a number uh, uh, in front and and back of me uh, in where where the, it is centered in the the heart center, so that I sort of radiance my heart center, uh, so that I gives up some of the the energy uh, to the surroundings, uh, what I get here in in the evening, and. Uh, um, give it to, back to the nature uh, uh, in the daytime and to the people I meet. Um, so that is, I think, my small part of uh, uh, sharing uh, our radiance. Thank you. I would like to link that. I shall see if I can find it. With um, it was a Sederkrantz quote on the board. Yes, do not look at that which you cannot accept as a falsity. Remember that for another it might be the greatest truth. Simply allow that which you do not, I presume, comprehend and cannot accept to pass. Do not make an issue of it. Wait and later you will see in it the light of your own soul recognizing its place in the scheme of things. And this, um, th this idea of the dog walking <laughs> with uh, a smiling at people and accepting people as they are and, and this Sederkranz bit re really hit me because I don't always have the most radiant thoughts towards certain of our politicians. And um, I do have this tendency uh, when looking at, at politics, I, I think, to think that what I, what I don't accept must therefore be false. And this idea that it could be a great truth to them, uh, it it just made me oh, wake up to to some different different ideas, and I'm just wondering whether <laughs> with some of these political ideas, I will see their place in the scheme of things. So I, I don't know quite why, but the dog walking brought that to mind. And it, to me, that was, that was quite a lesson. So thank you, whoever brought that up.
This is Annette. Uh, in this book of Eben Alexander, he is talking about the latest theory of scientists about um, a filter theory, um, thinking about the brain as a filter from um, diminishing uh, the here and now uh, to the consciousness of a personality. And I think it's, this is a very good theory. Uh, if you think about uh, uh, people you don't really agree, but think that, that their filter is perhaps a bit more um, clouded than, than others. Um, for instance, um, a, a theory about um, uh, people have a, could have a shimmer of, of uh, truth in it some, somewhere. Uh, they have got a, a tiny bit of the truth through their filter. Uh, others have perhaps the, uh, another piece of the puzzle and uh, together we can have a more um, fuller uh, picture. I think that's a beautiful picture to think of the brain as a filter. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Annette. Uh, that, that was that was helpful, and it also perhaps I'm talking too much. I know that uh, it just brought to mind the perhaps a different significance for me. Uh, I, I work a bit in in um, healing with the triangles of of magnetic healing from the soul to the heart to the brain and then out uh, through the hands for the magnetic healing and now it goes through the brain which is quite unusual for some of the triangles uh, that dk speaks on it tends not to be so much on on the physical or the the, uh, the the denser idea and then the radiatory healing is from the soul through the brain to the heart and back to the soul and out through the the aura but both these both these healing triangles have the brain and this idea of the, of the filter and different yeah, different people having different aspects to to again to to be sharing I, I like that thought thank you it brings to mind for me the challenge often of finding the thought or thoughts behind the words um, which often takes me time um, also I wanted to to share something too an experience I had years ago at, the, uh, at an art museum in Cleveland. Um, I was looking at a picture, I think it was by Paul Clay. Did I say that right? I'm not sure. But Clay, I know it was K-L-E-E. -E, and those of you who know the art world better than, than I do, I know are familiar with him. Um, but anyway, I, I, I was looking, I looked at a picture of his that they had in the museum. And it was, uh, uh, I guess you would say radiant. It was full of light. And I didn't see the light so strongly in art, other artwork around it. But that one just was, was just full of light. And I, I think it was, it seemed to me that it expressed soul, uh, some sort of soul quality. Um, maybe somebody could comment on that with more clarity. That's actually exactly how when I visit uh, galleries, I often get quickly overwhelmed with so much beauty and visual abundance. And that's how I uh, walk through galleries. I just look around and what's most resonant for me, then I stop and then I allow that radiance to 
<laughs> allow myself to come in, into uh, resonance with that radiance. And uh, also just to comment what Helen said before, it's, thank you for formulating that because uh, when I was saying before about sharing our radiance, uh, I recognize that it's that radiance comes through um, the origin of that radiance is definitely soul. And so it's the presence of that soul energy. And if, uh, for us uh, who meditate, uh, use uh, techniques of occult meditation in our routines, it's something very practical, like those triangles uh, uh, that DK gave for uh, different healing modalities. But it's there are many other meditations that's uh, about bringing the energy of soul into expression in our through our vehicles, through our heart, through our ajna, through our throat. So at the end of the day, it's our big advantage that we can use multiple meditation techniques given to us to bring the radiance of the soul into appearance and to be noticeable by others even when we're not smiling <laughs> like those images in the galleries that some images they just infused with light i'm aware now about the time of flow and i want to invite uh, those who didn't have a chance to share yet, if you would like to share anything, please. Um, be great to hear you. Hello, everybody. This is Darcy. What a what a very rich and radiant conversation. Radiance reminds me uh, that the sun is a beautiful symbol for us of radiance. And that same sun that gives light to all of life without um, it gives to the we and it sings that that sun is represented from the universal to the particular is our hearts it is our heart and our thoughts generate energy and bring potency to the thinking. And as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, is a statement of the Christ. And from that demonstrating personal center of thought, energy will stream down into the physical brain via the etheric body. And it will then condition the type of living, the expression and the influence of the man upon the physical plane. As a result of focused thinking in the heart, the spiritual eye opens and becomes the directing agent, employed consciously by the initiate whilst doing the work under the law of sacrifice. What is meant here by the words in the heart? The soul is the heart of the system of the spiritual man. It is the seat of the life and consciousness which animates the personality, and it is the motivating potency of every incarnation, according to the experience, conditioning the expression of the spiritual man in a particular rebirth. In early stages of experience, this I, E-Y-E, -E, remains closed, 
there is present no capacity for thought, and no ability to think in the heart. For example, from the soul levels, as the intellect develops and the power to focus upon the mental plane grows, the fact of the soul's existence becomes known and the goal of attention changes. There follows the ability to focus in the soul consciousness and so to fuse the soul and the mind. That at one takes place and a man can then begin to think in his heart. Then also the eye of the soul opens and energy from soul levels intelligently utilized becomes directed from those levels and pours into what is now ambiguously called the third eye. Immediately the personality in the three worlds begins to express itself as the soul upon the physical plane and will, purpose, and love begin to control. Humanity at all different levels of evolution is serving the divine purpose of something greater than us. We know this. We realize this. And to be able to bring forth those divine energies of heaven on earth as a son and daughter of God. We direct our thoughts, our thinkings, our feelings, our words, our deeds to the illumination of that radiant sun, which is a symbol that shines upon all life and generates life. Is a perfect example of how we, the group, can play our part in the greater whole of creating the I am because we are. As we prepare now for meditation, let us have another pause, a couple of minutes. Recollecting our thoughts, focusing our mind on the seed that came to us through our meditation since the full moon, or it's any seed that resonated for you, what you heard today what been shared in our struggle or what you heard today in your reflective meditation. So let focus those seeds that we would like to offer into the group chalice through our meditation.
in the meditation that Helen will lead us now in will be moments uh, where we will be invited to offer our seats to the group chalice. To be magnetized and radiated to humanity. So over to you, Helen. A sense that we have already begun our meditation. And as we do so, we recognize our spiritual community that has been active in the conversations during Taurus. And we align with all of us who are present on this call, those who are part of this group worldwide, but not on this call today, and all the subtle, unseen and hierarchical beings who bless and support our work. We align with the group heart in the heart of the chance. We align with our souls and with each other's souls. And with the one soul. We align with the hierarchy and all those beings who aid our invocative and evocative efforts as a new group of world servers on behalf of humanity. We are still under the influence of the new moon in Taurus, although we have just recently moved into Gemini. We can still be aware of the light of the Buddha shining through us, blending with the love of the Christ and these two energies flowing out to humanity. the throat centre of our planet. We can strive towards achieving continuity of consciousness and at awakening that inner light which, when seen and intelligently used, will serve to reveal aspects of the plan, especially the one to which the illumined knower can respond and usefully serve.
as we meditate, we can sense the sharing of our great radiance as a group. and sense a connecting tissue of the etheric web that I am and how it flows into and from we are. Sense the etheric web resonating with the cosmic etheric. and building the bridge for the coming one and our elders. You can sense a group disciple in the world beginning to understand our shramic patterns. Maybe consider the new economy as our radiance shining and sharing as from the ashram. I am because we are. Sharing our radiance. I am because we are sharing our radiance. And we now take a few moments in silence to reflect again on our precipitated seed thoughts. With love, we now offer our seeds into our chalice. We invite all who are so impressed to offer a seed thought into the chalice, verbally, but listening in the silence. Each one can unmute and speak as they are moved to. And we honour also those who choose not to speak, but who silently offer their formulated seeds into the chalice. And we will give a moment's silence after each offering. To allow it to fully move into the chalice and be heard. Thank you.
be open to the truth behind the outer appearance of art, science, politics, or appearance. Governments of nations must share radiance to avoid future conflict. All is lit by soul, if we are able to see. Also, that separates us from our soul, our brothers and sisters, the masters, Christ, and all divinity. Our life is theirs, and theirs is ours. We. Let the dominating good grow in humanity and divine love radiate in all forms. We are the new economy. We radiate the essence and quality of love through joined mental focus and open hearted inclusion. With the radiance of my soul, I recognize and invoke the radiance of your soul. We are. Thank you, Helen, for leading us. We open our eyes and then we open them again to see our cosmic consciousness that we are all feeling.
radiating group life and love to meet the need. Gently, we draw together the seeds within the chalice, allowing them to vibrate and resonate within the embracing light of the group vessel. We see the resonance of our combined seeds filling the chalice and vitalizing its radiant light, enhancing the beauty and wisdom of its tone as that sound flows forth into the world, expressing on the mental, astral and etheric planes and radiating to all receptive hearts and minds. And to seal our work together through this meditation, we sound the radiatory mantra. Radiance we are and power. We stand forever with our hands stretched out, linking the heavens and the earth. the inner world of meaning and the subtle world of glamour. We reach into the light and bring it down to meet the need. We reach into the silent place. and bring from there the gift of understanding. Thus, with the light we work and turn the darkness into day. And let us sound three silent ohms together.
Thank you, dear friends. Thank you, Helen. Thank you. Thank you, friends. Before we uh, end our work today, I want to share one announcement. In this time between the Vesak festival and Gemini festival, we've been told that Christ holds the tension of the impulse received during the moment of the Vesak from his brother Buddha, the impulse coming from Shambhala. This impulse to be released and radiated to humanity during the Gemini full moon, which known as the festival of humanity, festival of goodwill we recognize that this is significant time for many reasons and through our daily practice we recognize ourselves to being on the periphery of the hierarchy and holding the same tension along with the hierarchy and the Christ. This year is the year when the it is set in the esoteric psychology volume 2 um, page 241-242 about the a silent conclave that happens every nine years when the hierarchy meditates on the immediate aspect of the plan And so as we prepare for the coming Gemini festival, we suggest and encourage groups around the world to hold group meditations, aligning with this hierarchical meditation on the plan, using this opportunity to meditate on the immediate aspect of the plan related to the work of each group so we invite groups to organize their own small meetings in a circle to meditate on the plan immediate aspect of the plan related to our work And so in the Gemini cycle, the meditation for the common good, we will hold this opportunity and will offer our, our circle to hold 
such meditation as well. So when we meet for our quarter moon meeting, reflecting on the topic for the Gemini festival, that will this meeting will happen in the next week or so, let us hold that opportunity. And as we prepare for the, as we enter in the cycle of Gemini, as sun enters Gemini, let us consciously recognize this as opportunity and task for all esoteric groups. Thank you. Over to you, Tracy. As we close out the meeting, let us affirm the assertion of the plan of divine love and light. We are the human central presence. We are in the heart of Christ. We illuminate the planetary purpose. And from the place of fire, we contemplate and reflect the model. We guide back to the culture of heaven and we irradiate the hierarchical order 